I hereby call the Board of Adjustment to order, and I find that we have a full board present. And with that, I'll ask Mr. Ray to provide the invocation. As we all pray to our own personal persuasions, uh, we thank you for bringing everyone here safely, and we ask for a safe return, everyone, this evening. Uh, we ask for the fortitude and knowledge to uh, give this board the opportunity to make a just decision. We ask that you bless those on the seas, those overseas, and those here at home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, with that, I want to thank everybody for coming, and hope you had a safe and happy holiday. And uh, have not declared bankruptcy. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to enter, have everybody go around the table and introduce themselves, starting with Mr. Herbold. Hi, Gary Herbold, Vice Chairman of the Board of Adjustment. Jerry Bittner, City Council Liaison to the Board. Gil Stewart, Member. Matthew Ray, Member. Debbie Jefferson, Staff. Jerry Willett, Chief Zoning Code Enforcement Officer and Staff Liaison to the Board. Al Burgess, ETJ Representative. I'm Keith Fisher, Attorney for the Board of Adjustment. <coughs> and I'm Marty Goldman, Chairman. And with that, you have in front of you a copy of the minutes from the 24th of August of 2016. I'll give you a half a moment to review them since I assume you've done such. And then I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Okay, I have a motion. I have a, I have a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there is no old business to come before the board. Therefore, we'll go to new business. And with that, we have one action, one item for action. It's an appeal from the action of a code enforcement official on the property at 201 Teakwood Place, Midway Park, North Carolina. Um, Who will present on behalf of the staff? Gary? I will be, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, by way of introduction, um, Mr. Christopher Pace has submitted a request for an appeal from a decision of the Zoning Enforcement Officer of the Code Enforcement Section. A notice of violation was sent to the owners of record of 201 Teakwood Place on November 9th of 2016. The violations were for the operation of a home occupation at, at a residence without permits and the unauthorized storage of commercial vehicles in a residential zone. As you can see on your screen, um, 201 Teakwood Place is located in the Hunters Creek subdivision off of Highway 24. It is in uh, within the city's extraterritorial jurisdiction. Therefore, the regulations of the Uniform Code, uh, excuse me, the Unified Development Ordinance uh, apply to this property. The property is a corner lot on Teakwood and Idlebrook. Let it me interject is... just a second. This is my own fault. Mr. Pace, would you join us at the table, please? I apologize for that. <coughs> Sorry. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Ouellette, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, the property is on residential single family five uh, and it is in the middle of a all-single-family residential subdivision with uh, residential single-family 10 to the south, uh, residential multifamily high density to the west, and residential single-family 20 uh, to the east. This is a 2006 uh, aerial photo of the property at 201 Teakwood Place. Um, procedural history, on October 31st of 2016, I received a voicemail message from Mr. Justin Smith, Onslow County Planning and Development uh, Department, regarding a complaint that he had received from a citizen regarding a business and storage of commercial vehicles at 201 Teakwood Place. On November 8th, 2016, 
Code Enforcement Officer Phyllis Arp conducted a site visit at 201 Teakwood Place and took photographs. And Ms. Arp is here today should the board or Mr. Pace have any questions of her. On November 9th of 2016, a notice of violation was sent to the owners of record according to the Onslow Park County property card citing illegal home occupation and the unauthorized storage of vehicles. On November 14th, Mr. Pace met with Gary Willett, Chief Zoning uh, Code Enforcement Officer, to discuss the content of the violation. Uh, on that same day, Mr. Pace asked to speak with the Development Services Director and the Community Development Director, which are my direct supervisors. And Ms. Gray and Mr. Goodson did meet with Mr. Pace for a short period of time on that date. I was not uh, in that meeting. I cannot say what transpired, but Ms. Gray is here. Should the board or Mr. Pace have any questions of her? Gary, before we proceed, I need to swear you in. And Mr. Pace is one of the people he's going to testify. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth? The whole truth to the best of your knowledge, so help you God to I the do, foregoing sir. and the coming testimony. Yes, sir. So be it. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, to the best of your knowledge, so help you God? Yes, sir. Have a seat. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Let proceed. Yes, sir. On November 29th of 2016, Mr. Pace met with Mr. Goodson and Ms. Gray uh, at his request for a uh, formal administrative hearing to discuss the actions uh, and the citation uh, previously mentioned. At that time, at the conclusion of that meeting, Mr. Pace submitted his application for an appeal from the action to this board. And we're here today to uh, discuss the details of this case. Here are some photographs dated November 8th, the day that Ms. Arp went out and uh, conducted her site visit. You see there's commercial uh, equipment on the property under the carport. Um, commercial vehicles adjacent to the property in the public right of way. Article 4.3 of the Uniform Development Ordinance uh, references accessory use standards. These standards apply to all accessory uses associated uh, with a property and it states all accessory uses and accessory structures shall conform and apply to the requirements of the UDO. I've listed some of the standards for accessory uses and this is not all inclusive of the Unified Development Ordinance but are pertinent to uh, this case. It says accessory use standards must be customarily accessory and clearly compatible, incidental, subordinate, and in harmony with the principal use and structure. Subo they must be subordinate in area, extent, and purpose to the principal use and structure. With regard to home occupations, which was one of the violations being cited, it says the, pro the property cannot contain uh, outdoor display or storage of goods, equipment, or services that are associated with a home occupation. Another uh, criteria for a home-based business is there shall be no exterior evidence of the conduct of a home occupation. A home occupation shall not create a measurable increase in traffic within the neighborhood. All vehicles used in connection with a home occupation shall be no larger than the size of a vehicle 
customarily found at a single family residence and a home occupation shall not result in the increase in any parking areas either paved or unpaved whether on the property or in the public right of way. Home occupation activities shall be clearly secondary and incidental to the primary use of the property as a residence and does not change the character or outside appearance of the residence. With regard to commercial vehicle storage, the code states heavy trucks, boats, campers, trailers, or major recreational equipment shall not be parked or stored on a public rights of way in a residential zoning district. That is all the evidentiary testimony I have. Uh, the action required of this board today will be would be to either affirm or uphold the action of the code enforcement official <clears throat> to modify it in some way, shape, or form, or to reverse it. Uh, one thing I do want to point out as a note, the code states that the board shall modify or reverse an interpretation or a decision only if it finds that there has been a clear and demonstrable <coughs> error, abuse of discretion, or denial of due process. Thank you, Gary. Any... Uh Questions from the board for Mr. Ulat? Yeah, I have some questions. I have a few questions. Sure. First um, question is, in respect to the UDL, what's what's the, the largest size boat that a, um, a resident can have? It doesn't state a specific size of the boat, but it does state for uh, commercial vehicles, Anything more than one axle, and I believe it's storage, storage. I believe it's twenty thousand pounds. Twenty thousand pounds. Yes, sir. The standards of this subdivision apply to heavy trucks with more than two axles or that exceeds 20,000 pounds of gross vehicle weight. Trailers with more than one axle or major recreational equipment, including but not limited to boats, campers, recreational vehicles, motorhomes, travel trailers, proposed for parking, or storage within a residential area. So you're saying that you can't have trailers with more than one axle? According to the ordinance, yes, sir. That's what it's... That, that's what's called... That's, that's what, what it's specifically saying? In a residential area, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I got a question for you. Okay, you say over 20,000 pounds, sir? You say... Or, or with more than one axle. Like okay, that them bobcats, my storage, my my toys, cause I got big heavy equipment, like big heavy equipment over my land or whatever. Them toys, that toy don't weigh them is six thousand pounds, six thousand two hundred pounds. But how many axles does it have? It don't have no axles. It's a bobcat. Okay. What you seen in the picture? Track vehicle. I, this is a track vehicle. It's a track thing. I wasn't finished asking questions either. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. You finished asking questions. All right, go ahead. Um. In respects to uh, um, the vehicles being parked in the right of way, so one of the issues with his vehicles was they were parked in the right of way. Was that one of the issues? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, um, in the other issue, um, I seen the pictures where they were under a carport. Yes, sir. Okay. Would it would have made any difference if there was a, a private seat fence and the, um, and they weren't seen? No, sir. Why is that? The, the, the ordinance states uh, for the first code violation that um, Mr. Pace has been cited for 
was operating a home business, a home occupation, without a permit. So he has a business at his residence, but he doesn't have approval from the city of Jacksonville to operate a home business. Should he uh, make application for a home-based business and it does get approved, there are specific performance criteria or standards to operate a business from your home. One of those standards is you cannot store equipment on the property, whether it's visible or not. So um, I'm, I'm looking at his, his appeal and the relief that he's requesting is um, a permit for small equipment. Is there, is there a- There is no such permit. Okay, is there, is there um, a definition of small equipment um, as far as the UDO is concerned? No, sir. So uh, if you have a, um, a bobcat is what you have, right, yes, sir? sir? So if you have a bobcat the same size as a, as a lawn tractor, um, what would be the difference? The difference is the equipment is associated with a business from the home, which he does not have a permit to do. Should he get a permit to operate a business, the performance criteria for home occupation it says shall not result in the increase in any parking areas, either paved or unpaved, whether on the property or within the public right of way. Go back to that. The home occupation shall not result in the increase in any parking areas, either paved or unpaved, whether on the property or on the right of way. So you're saying that he wouldn't be able to um, have anything parked. That's one back. of the performance okay. standards for a home occupation. Okay. So as long as whatever he has is, is, is capable of being parked in his driveway, then it would meet the standard. I mean, according, that's what I'm No, really because there are other standards, like I say, normally associated customarily and incidental to a residential neighborhood. Bobcats in a driveway are not customarily, in, in, customarily seen in a residential area. It's equipment associated with a business. Okay, so. If they were, he could park a box trailer. He has a lawn landscaping business has a box trailer parked in his driveway, one box trailer. That's customarily associated with a residential zoning district and you have a business. Four or five box trailers, because you have a booming business and need all of that equipment, the, the intent of a home occupation is to allow an individual to use his home for income as an office uh, in situations like that, but it, it cannot change the character of the neighborhood or the resident, the primary use of the residence as a dwelling unit. And, and I'm, I'm asking these questions because I just want to make sure I'm clear because I know that um, there are a number of citizens who have um, uh, landscaping um, businesses and they have trailers and uh i seen a picture in box, here. Trailer. Box, trailer. box trailers i I've got seen. a lot of it on my phone too sir if you need to see yeah in I, my I, neighborhood yeah i've seen a lot of the, the <clears throat> box trailers um yes, that, that he's identifying in the neighborhoods and now i'm just um trying to understand uh what's different from this particular box trailer i mean um the uh this trailer right here and the uh the bucket uh that's that's his yeah no i, I got you i'm saying yeah. i know that well i'm asking what is as far as this particular box trailer what's the difference between this particular um box trailer and the um, the ones that you you normally see in uh nothing sir okay and i'm not saying he can't have the box trailer okay should he apply for a home occupation permit and it get approved he could have that box trailer there for his lawn and landscaping business. But a box trailer, four bobcats, a lift, a flatbed trailer, all this equipment 
on one residential property in a residential neighborhood changes the character of the neighborhood, changes the, uh, it, it, it's not in keeping with the performance standards listed in the ordinance for running a business from your home. And has he made, has he made application? No. Have you made application? I tried to, but he said it wouldn't fly, so. Who said it wouldn't it, fly? He did. Did you tell him it wouldn't fly before he applied, or? He asked about a home occupation, and I didn't say he could not apply. I said he, he so would not be able time. to continue his business as is under the performance standards required for a home occupation. And he also had a hearing with Ms. Gray and um, Mr. Goodson, the development services director. I wasn't uh, at that hearing. I don't know if Ms. Gray can add anything to uh, what transpired at the administrative hearing. So with the home occupation, but you, you never applied for home occupation. I came up here to apply and I talked to him and I also, she, she went here, Ms. Phyllis, and uh, he basically told me I was wasting my time, so that's why we're here. Did you, know, a, did you know it was something that you had to apply for before, or was this just, was it it's something? It's something recently, because the whole thing is, uh, when I purchased my house back 10 years ago, and they result, I didn't have to do that. I went and got my business ID uh, at the courthouse over there and all that stuff. And I asked them, what any kind of license I need? And they said, well, I was fine in here until this here occurred here. How long, how long have you had your equipment on your yard? Uh, since I was in the Marine Corps back about six years now. For six years? Yes, sir. About six years. So since 2011? Yes, sir. And so when when the the um, uh, the officer, um, when you talked to the officer, you uh, you identified that you wanted to apply for? Um... I didn't never talk to the officer I came up here. Okay. I just got something in the mail saying that, they been to find me five hundred dollars a day if I don't move my stuff. So what exactly did they tell you when you when you got here, as far as the application? Oh, I came up here to do the application. I talked to another guy that worked in the department over here somewhere, and he stated that um, uh, no go. Then he went and got his boss, which is Mister. Can't what Mister. Goodson. Uh, and he told me I'm wasting my time to try to, and I was. The same paperwork that he pulled up there, he was, he was saying, he was trying to explain to me why I can't, you know, it's like I'm wasting my time if I do it. So what that's when we that? set up. I don't remember the date, sir. Uh, but you, he did not tell you you could not apply. Yes, he did. It, well, no, he didn't say he didn't say I couldn't apply, but he said I'm wasting my time. What okay. date? If okay. somebody said you're wasting your time, why would you, you know what I'm saying? What, what don't date, make sense. What date, sense. What, date, what date was that? Was that October, November? I'm trying to. That was, that was in November, sir. Was I believe November. that was in November when I came up here. Um, let me ask a uh, question. Do, do you ever, um, is, is it the policy, is it ever the policy of, of your department to hold a decision in advance until um, an application for home occupation um, goes through in, in situations where uh, a citizen already has existing um, equipment? Is it ever? We, we give every citizen every benefit of the doubt. When Mr. Pace received his notice of violation, there's a contact number and a phone number to call the officer who initiated the case. In this instance, Mr. Pace got his notice of violation in the mail, certified mail and first class. He came to City Hall to speak with someone about his violation. He came to the permitting department. They came down to my office and got me. I had a very short conversation with Mr. Pace and um, I said, very short conversation. He said he wanted to talk to my supervisor. But what I was asking was, when a citizen, a, a citizen um, uh, that's in a situation similar to uh, Mr. Pace, Mr. Pace, um, if if uh, they are in violation of a UDO uh, in respects to home occupations, when they apply, if, if they say, "Hey, I want to apply for um, a, a home occupation." Um, permit or whatever. Do you like hold your decision in abeyance until you see if um, 
uh, they can meet the requirements. If a citizen came in and requested that, we would say, sure, uh, I'll give you three, five days to make application. It doesn't take a long time to fill out an application and apply for a permit. I will point out in the notice of violation that's in your uh, packet that this letter, the notice of violation was sent out on November 9th. And uh, it says in, in order to come into compliance, you must cease this use within 30 days or no later than <coughs> December 12th. Between November 9th and December 12th, it, um, Mr. Pace had conversations with us and could have filled out an application for home occupation within that period of time. He chose to speak with uh, Mr. Goodson and Ms. Gray and then made the decision to appeal uh, to this board an ap requesting an appeal stays any enforcement action until the appeal is heard. So no civil penalties have been levied uh, on Mr. Pace to date because he made, he followed due process and made application for appeal within the time prescribed. So that's why we're here today. Can I say something? Sir? Uh, I just don't understand. It don't make no. We wouldn't even be here if that's all I had to do. Just fill out this, this paperwork, and then see what they say. The request that that I was already before I even. That's why I came up here and do to fill out the application for my thing I had for my my equipment I had in my yard for the last six plus years or whatever. And it was told that you fill it out, but you won't go. You won't go pay it. You you. It was going to be denied, so that's why we're here today. So they told you, somebody told you that it was going to be denied whether you fill it out or not? Yes, Mr. Gary told me that. Did you tell him that? No, sir. Did you say anything that could give the perception that it's going to be denied regardless? I probably told him, and I don't recall the conversation word for word, but I said, with a home occupation, you have to meet certain performance standards. If you make application today, you would still have to remove all your equipment and run your business from your home within that criteria set in the UDO for running a business from a home. No outward appearance, no storage of equipment, no increase in vehicular traffic. Just filling out the form does not make everything go away and you continue to run your business as you are today with all the equipment and all the vehicles in the residential area. When you make application for a permit, you have to abide by the regulations associated with that permitting authority. I got a question for Mr. Pace. Are, are you, um, based upon what Mr. Um, uh, um, Euler has identified as the issues, um, are, are you prepared to mitigate the, the city's issues and um, do what you have to do to uh, um, uh, um, apply for that home occupancy? Yes, sir. Um, um, how are you I would go ahead, sir. Where are you going to move all this equipment at? Say what now? How long will it take to move your um, your equipment? Uh, how long would it take? Yeah. If, 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 oh. you, if you had to relocate I, your equipment. Yes, sir. You, you, if you had to relocate your equipment, how long will it take to <coughs> take you to relocate your equipment in order to be in compliance and then apply for the home occupancy um, um, uh, permit, permit mm -hmm. that um, Mr. Eul is identifying? I don't know, a couple of days I bring. A couple of days? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm kind of lost. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm what lost what I think what he's trying to say is if you, if you found a, a different location to store your equipment, you can still apply for the, the home occupancy permit but you can't keep your equipment on the on your property. So how long would it take you to move the equipment so you come into compliance, stay in compliance with the permit? But once it's moved, it never comes back into the neighborhood. Yeah, that's what. Okay, okay, I understand. Uh, I can move. I I got I got an office. I don't, that's why I don't run my business from my house. That is my personal stuff. You know what I'm saying? That is my personal thing. I rather have, I don't use that stuff half the time. 
I got, I, ha I have a office with a. Mm -hmm. All right, I think before we get to Mr. Pace, are there any more questions for, for Mr. Ouellette? No, I was just asking both of them talking at the same time. I figured if, if y'all Well, I, I, I think it'd be that let him present what he wants to say, and then we can do that, and the rest of it we're going to do under discussion. So there are no other questions for Mr. Roulette. All right, Mr. Pace. Yes, sir. First of all, I think most of the board is biased towards me. Use a big word there, but that's all right. Um... What is the next step after we get through this here? Because I already know where we're going with this here. I want to get ready to, I don't want to waste your time, I don't waste my time, because I was working when I came in here. I want to get ready for the next step, because everybody, me against the board, for them, that's, that's how I feel in here, how you rolling your eyes, it's on camera or whatever, sir, Mr. Chairman, you know what I'm saying? But I got pictures to present my case. I got pictures of my neighborhood and the boats, and all that stuff, if we can pass it around, can we do that? Sure. And, and what well, you can see. Now, let me, well, let me let turn my phone off. Yeah. Let's stay, let me try and stay on track. Is it Superior Court? Or is this appealable? This is appealable. Superior Court. It mm -hmm. be Superior Court. So the next Superior answer would court? be you'd have to see, appeal it to Superior Court. Okay. Yeah. All right. Does that clarify that question? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, okay. <laughs> now let that? me pass my pictures around. That's fine. You will. Mr. Chairman, and why he's going, uh, um, in respect to what you, you just said just now, yes, I, I think um, what, what you don't want to do is, is have a preconceived notion that um, uh, things are going to go one way or the other. Well, just, let, let, just, just let the board ask the questions, because we, I mean, we have to do our jobs too. Yes, sir, I understand that, but so, when people roll their eyes when you talk, uh, come on, sir. Really? So just... Just, just focus on why you're here today, and um, then we go from there. Okay, okay. exhibit one. We had, this probably gonna take a long time because uh, each picture I'm gonna send around to the board where y'all can see my neighborhood. That uh, all the stuff that he said. What are these working. pictures supposed to show? Show that my neighborhood are full of violations, according to him, that have been here just as long as I've been been there. You know, these same things. I don't have a problem with it. I'm, I don't know who this person had a problem with it, but, okay, there go one of them. It's a picture of a boat. Yes, sir. Boat. Big boat. Okay. Single axle mm -hmm. trailer. That's a boat. Okay, I, I do have a question. Yes, sir. Is there more than one boat on that property? Is it more than one boat? You don't supposed to have a boat calling the recreational. That's recreational. Huh? And that's what that paperwork said, that what he was reading off? Is that, Mr. Uh -huh. Garrett, uh -huh. can, can they have a boat? Yes, sir. They, they can't can have, have a boat. boat. On a trailer, a single axle trailer, you know, three or four boats, then your, you know, storage okay, of. Three or four boats, okay. Go ahead, we'll get to excess of. I'm going to send it back down, swipe it, and open it back up, it closed. Okay, this might take a while, like I said, I was just going to show you. Touch it, it won't close. <coughs> and you did say the boats can be parked on the grass. That was boats fine. can be on the property, yes, sir. Okay, what about junk cars with no tags? All my stuff got tags on it. It's like a couple houses down for me. A junk yard. That's in the same neighborhood. 
Might have to touch the phone where it won't go off through it. I'll start over again. Touch the screen. Okay, a similar question. Are there are there multiple junk cars on that yes, one property? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just one. open it up. Mm -hmm. I only see one. You see one car. Two. Oh, uh, I see two cars, but I only see what one appears to be one junked car. Well, if it ain't got a tag on it, sir, it's. Well, the other one, the vehicle sitting next to it, would appears to be red. I'm looking at the front, and we don't put plates on the front. Don't, well, no, but what I'm saying is they don't have tags on it. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I could, please, Sorry. with regard to <clears throat> junk vehicles, junk vehicles is a nuisance which falls under the city code and not the unified development ordinance, which are the land use regulations. The city code, because this property in that subdivision is in the city's extraterritorial jurisdiction, the city code is not enforced because we don't have police powers in the ETJ. We have land use regulations, but we don't have police powers. Therefore, things in the city code, junk vehicles, high grass weeds, trash and debris, we cannot enforce in the ETJ. Okay. So it's not applicable. All right, thank you. You understand that, um, Mr. Pace? No, I don't, but the... Okay, next one. Next one is this. I'll uh, ask this two houses down from right here. <coughs> They've been there for like uh, about a month and a half. And what is it? It's debris. Looks like yard. Debris. Somebody's taken a tree down and just piled all the brush right in the front yard. That's what it appears. That's also city ordinance, though, right? Yes, sir. But they don't have city trash picked up. Right. They're, they're county, sir. Right. This is ETJ. Mr. Yule, if you don't mind, can you explain that to Mr. Pace, the difference between... I think it's shut off again. So what Mr. Burgess has asked is where your property is located in the Hunters Creek subdivision, yes, although you have a city of Jacksonville mailing address, you... You are in what we call the extraterritorial jurisdiction, or the ETJ, which is an area just outside the corporate city limits that North Carolina General Statute gives the city of Jacksonville or the governing body, the city council, authority to regulate land uses. So things like building a house, putting on an addition, uh, fencing, things of that nature, you have to come to the city of Jacksonville to get permits for land use issues. Nuisance codes such as high grass, weeds, trash, and debris, we can only enforce those regulations within the corporate city limits. Because you're outside the corporate city limits, we don't have any jurisdiction over those type of nuisances. Onslow County has a uh, land use enforcement department, which is similar to our code enforcement department, that these concerns about junk vehicles, trash, debris, things of that nature can be reported to the Onslow County uh, zoning and code enforcement department. Okay, my, all right. My, my next question is if I bought my house in the tent, I told my realtor or whatever when I bought my house a long time ago that what I was planning on doing. And if it's in my yard on my property, um, I can understand the road, you know what I'm saying? Maybe the trails or whatever, take them over there to my office or whatever. But for as my personal stuff like that, I mean, that's, that's what I got a problem with. Uh, next picture is... Well, what was the question? Oh, thank you, Matt. I was going to ask the same thing. Exactly. What is the what was that question? I, I did. It, it was a statement. Okay. You that's right. I understand okay. that. Okay. All right. Now here go a picture of my house. It was sucking to. The, it was taking a day. This is today. Yes, sir. Touch the screen. <laughs> My touch screen, sir. Nope. Yep. That's still <laughs> That touch the screen because it's gonna go away. Ooh. 
<laughs> Thank you. What's, what's in this picture? That's his house. Oh, that's your house. It's, that's my house with the, the bobcat up on it that you can't really holler. That's what uh, everybody complained about right there. That's the only thing be at my house. Today? Huh? That's the only thing there today? No. For the last six years, that's, that's, all, that's how it's set up, that's how it look. On the road, the only thing I can see y'all having a problem right with pitch? is the stuff. The, the stuff. That's the right pitch? Yeah, but you can go back one more. I'll go the other way, I don't want in reference to the aerial, aren't are those vehicles, I mean, they, they had to have been there at some point, correct? These these bobcats? Mm -hmm. Yes, because I was doing maintenance on my on my machines that particular day, probably. If they line up like that, I'm doing something to the machine. I'm trying to move something out of there, out of my yard, because I got, as you can see on your picture, go back to that picture you're talking about. Right yeah. there. Okay. In my yard, on my property, okay, all that was which the first thing is a golf court. Is a golf court. The the second one I don't have no more. All I got is the last two in the end. Matt, it's kind of downsized. Yep. I had three, but I went to two. But the, um, but them two, them two in the golf court, that was parked up under my uh, my honey, which you can't see from the top because it'll be covered up or whatever. And as you notice on to the back right there, on my house, I have a extra pad built right by a shed right there where normally my that trailer right there will be parked but that particular day it was you know what i'm saying it was parked out on the road there but i have places to park but i don't understand what i mean i got concrete all because i'm a concrete guy too i got concrete all over the place in my yard But all those vehicles are yours. I don't, I don't have them all no more, I tell you. What what, what vehicle are you talking about? You're talking about the, the trucks on the road? Yes, sir. They're, they're mine. I don't have a problem. I, I want to move it. I don't have a problem moving my like my F-350 from a business. What, and my, what about the other stuff? Where, where that red vehicle is right there? That ain't mine. That's all those those four vehicles over there, are those yours? The only, thing, only vehicle I got is the two in my, in my yard. It's a log against how many cars you have. Too. No, no, when I'm oh, okay. just, I'm trying to. Uh, no, I just got two vehicles out there. So two, right. two three. Okay. They got the one on the road right here. On oh, Adderbrook? Well, see, Adderbrook got that one right there. And I got the Toyota, which is the red one there. I mean, it's the uh, gray, the truck, and then my wife, Honda, right there. What is that sitting on, on Teakwood right yeah. here? On Teakwood. And my trailer, that's the trailer with Pace yourself okay. on it. Okay. Okay. Just point. Okay. That's mine. This, uh huh. These, right? I don't have all of them no more, I tell you. And I have the trailer. That's the last thing I had the trailer. The gray top on the trailer over there by what say Teak Wood there. Okay. And, you know, you can. Everybody always say I probably got like the one of the best, you know what I'm saying, looking for its neatness and all that because I'm a yeah. landscaping guy. Okay. In the neighborhood with the bobcats, it actually look good. I, I kind of like it like that. But yeah, and I did the concrete thing, you know what I'm saying? So is that trailer still sitting right there now? Yes, sir, it is. But it can be, it can be, I can understand the road. Like I say, that, that was say teak wood and out with them trucks. No problem. I just take it over to my office with my bulldozers and excavators and, and stuff like that are my big, my big, big equipment. You know what I'm saying? Okay, but see, that stuff, they steal over there though. Over on Rock and Run Road, they steal a lot over there. And so I don't, you know what I'm saying? That stuff I had for a while. That's what I started off with. So that's why, you know what I'm saying? Just like y'all had the old cars. So that's sentimental the value. It's, yeah, sentimental value to me. That's why they stay there. They don't even have to, they don't get moved unless them going out there, shine them up, wash them up because it's rain or whatever. They step under, they like my little toys. So they personal? They my personal stuff. So they ain't my equipment. They ain't for my business. You got a sentimental attachment to three bobcats? Say what now? You got a sentimental attachment to three yes, bobcats? Yes, I do. Two bobcats. That's all I got there. Two bobcats. Yes, because sir. that's what you that's, started off with. Yes, sir. They so sell them so they, they stay. That's sure. like a frame. If I would, if I if I had the time, I really, if I had the time, I'd build it, I'd build it in my house right there. You know what I'm saying? If I had the time. 
If I have to, I, I, I just go ahead and get the time and build it around my house. So you, well, don't, you won't ever see it. So you don't do any work with the with two them, Exactly. That's just exactly. Only thing I use is the stuff on the road. And like this here, yes, I'm guilty. On the road, I can move it. Yes, I'm guilty. I can move it, it's on the road. But all that stuff there is my personal single bender. Right? Something like a country man. Yeah, like, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because like I said, I got a 62 pound. Well, if I was trying to park in my yard, I bring my 62,000 pound excavator. Y'all want to see a picture of that too? I bring that and put it in my yard if I was trying to uphold. You know, I did 22 years in the Marine Corps. So I think I, I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? I think I did my part for this country. So I'm trying to do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to screw nobody over. All I want to do is live. Let me live. You know what I'm saying? That's my sentimental value on Bobcats and what y'all told them in the meeting when we head over there. Okay. Uh, we and I got the bulldog. What I'm saying is I got all the big stuff over there at my, my, my land. All that stuff is my personal stuff. It's just like if you got an old 69 Chevrolet or whatever that you got, some people put them in the house. Y'all ever seen that? Oh, they have, make a a you know what I, you know what I was thinking about doing though? Point. I was thinking about, I was thinking about making a, get a glass case. I'm on camera. Okay. Get a glass case and build all them bulk. Cause I, that's what I started off with. I, you know what I'm saying? I understand that. Will you do me a favor, please? Yes, sir. Will you walk up to that photo? Yes, sir. And touch the vehicles that are still maintained in okay. or around the property and tell me briefly Bam. what it is. Okay. Exhibit A right here, sir. This is an F-350 right here, and that's a lift. That's what I go up in the trees. I'm a tree guy. Okay. Yes, sir. I go in the trees. But it can move if y'all tell me to move. Okay. Go on right on my land. I normally have another truck right here, F-250. Which is gone because I probably was working. I got to make some money. You know what I'm saying? See how dirty I am? The boots and stuff. I've been working all day today. It's gone. It, okay. it was gone that day. They, they ain't catched it. Uh, this here, it always stay there. This truck, it's been there for a while. Normally it would be parked. Hold on. Okay, this concrete over here is shallow right there. Concrete, concrete. I do concrete. Y'all need some concrete right there. But then concrete back here, and this my over here. I build myself too. I build all this stuff. On my house. I'm proud Let's, of myself. Let me stay with the vehicles for a minute. Okay, so yeah, can... let's get back to the vehicles. All right. Okay. That's my vehicle there. Okay. That's illegal? That's never. I'm not. I am asking okay. you hey, to no, I ain't point no, 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 you, you say. Excuse okay. me a second. Can I finish? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I would just like you to point, touch, touch the vehicle and tell me what it is and if it's still there. Hold up, court. My wife drive. It's still there. Okay. Truck that I never get a chance to do. It's still there. I never get a chance to drive it though. It's actually it's in the garage okay. right now. Um, that's it. That's it. One, two, three vehicles. And then the oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. These ain't vehicles, but my personal. I got two Bobcats. That one, I don't know which one is one. Cause one of them was track and one of them was wheel. And I started off with the track one. And I went to a wheel. I got rid of the wheel. That's a golf cart. Is that illegal too? I don't know. I'm just asking. I got so the golf court, a little golf court, a gas operated golf court, and one bobcat, two bobcat. Which number? If you go to my house right now, you won't be able to see it from the, if you had an airplane, because it'd be up under here. See what I'm saying? But they're still on the property. Yes, sir. They're on my okay. property. Okay. Can okay. any given time I can go build a build a round house if I okay. need to. Thank you. Yes, sir. How much do they weigh? How much do they weigh? Yeah. One of them weigh about six thousand pounds. By like a long, by like a big lawnmower, like some of these lawnmowers people got. And these you call your talking. They my toys. Okay. I don't, you, I don't work them. I work the bulldozer. That's what. Matter of fact, I just got through clearing some land today. I work my bulldozer and my uh, hydro cutter. You know that thing go up the tree and go boom. That stuff there. And then I drive my 18 wheels and all that stuff. That's over there at my office. So this is my personal stuff. I tried to carry it. Up. My wife didn't like it either. And somebody went in there and ripped the wires out of my. One of my bobcats for no reason. It was your wife? No, no, no. So I said she ain't like she don't, she like me. She hoping she probably hoping that I can move. She don't, you know what I'm saying? But but uh -uh. You, but you saying the the, the 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 two small bobcats yes. you got? Yes, sir. Are my personal sentiment, sentimental value? Sentimental value. And that's to why me. you have them there. Exactly. Just like I got guns from the military when I was in the Marine Corps. I got them hanging out. Did you, did you get them on the pictures too? When I was in the military, I got guns. That's sentimental value to me too. You know what I'm saying? This all sentimental value to me. I got blown up a couple times in the war, so a lot of people don't understand me. But I did take my mouth today. 
Gotcha. Are the yeah. Bobcats operational? Are they operational? Yeah, they can be. Are they? Are they? Uh, they got, they probably, you know, a little tweaking or whatever. But they just, they just sit there. You know what I'm saying? They ain't really operational. I mean, I can get them probably apart and probably get them together. But they, like I said, it's, it's the personal stuff. Mr. Chairman, if I could, please. Sure. Um, we, Mr. Pace talked, about, you know, and the board asked to point out some of the vehicles there. These aerial photos, I don't know what month, they're 2006 aerial photos, but if the chairman would allow me, I'd enter in the evidence, pictures that were taken this morning of the property. Can I talk on this? Oh, you want me? Because you had your time. Can I talk on this? I'm still up, man, sir. I, I, I mean, that's good. I'm glad you did, though. I just want to submit you all this evidence. Yes, sir. Now, this today, now. Oh, look. Now, can I, let me talk on this. Let's go. Everybody go to page one. That's how my that's how my stuff look right there. Them right there, sentimental value to me. Right there. See them two? Two bobcats. All right. Now, you go to the next one right here. Next page right here. It can be moved, it's a dump trailer. I work there, that's what I, I make money with right here. This dump trailer right here. Dump trailer, that trailer there, uh, if I get some work, I'll put my lawnmower in there and go to work with it, but when I'm doing the landscape thing, you know what I'm saying? So them, I understand y'all want it on the road. That right there, the next picture up under there, sir, the blue, the lift, uh, yeah, it need to probably, it, uh, I can understand, you might want that to go away too. But th that white truck there, that's uh that's what I drive. Matter of fact, it's out there in the parking lot right there. Okay. And I don't know these repeated pictures. The next page. Now flip to the next page. You talking about third page three or page four? Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, all right. One, two. Page three. That's repeated pictures. Okay. Then we go to the next page. The next page. Okay. Oh yeah. There. I got me a 2016, uh, I bought me a brand new truck. I, I'm, we shouldn't have no problem with that being parked on my property, huh? That ain't for my business there. It ain't, it's, it, it's, it's, it's just my truck, and it's my personal truck. You know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the 3500, the white one, that ain't a, that ain't a business truck. I understand uh, what you're talking okay, about. Okay, you understand what I'm saying, sir? Okay. Yeah, they go if you turn okay, yeah, Darren. I got another little Toyota right there. That's not a business truck, neither. I love cars. You know what I'm saying? That's not a business truck, neither. That ain't the same truck you seen them on picture one. Does it have tags on it? Yes, sir. That's another thing. Okay. All my vehicles got tags when I pay my taxes. You know what I'm saying? Did you take a picture of the tag too? Were you sure? No, sir. Oh, okay. But yeah, all of them got tags on it. All of them got even my trellis got tags on them, sir. Now, what the about Uh-huh. This picture. Yes, sir. That's the one right there, sir, on Olive Oak Circle. Okay. See right there? That's... I'm, oh, okay. No, 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 I know, I know. I got a lot of stuff in So everything that we see here is what you point you pointed out? The stuff no, not here. everything. We got more stuff on here because this the up-to-date stuff. This the up-to-date. Now, this, what you, this one on there, the 2016. Obviously, I didn't have that back in 2006. It's 2016. I didn't have that truck there. So that's new. This one right here is a 2000 Nissan. I ain't too long hit that because I, I got a good deal. I think I paid forty five hundred dollars for that, and the guy ain't got them like eighty thousand miles. I like cars and stuff. In that garage, I should have opened that up for y'all where y'all can see my Harleys. I got like three of them too. You know what I'm saying? So, so as far as the stuff that's outside the home, what's yes, what's on these pictures? This that's not up there right now. What you mean? What's the pit? What, what Mr. Hewlett? Um, um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, that's don't trick the question now. Look. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you, the white. The oh, white shirt. Let's go to the pictures. Let me hold the pictures and let's go to the board where, we, where nobody won't get, you know what I'm saying? That's where, fine. Where everybody, that'll work? All right, boy. Okay. Hey, sir, can we switch up? Because I messed around and lost it out of, out of action and stuff. There you are. Okay, so, all right. Page one. The Bobcats, my two Bobcats I told you about, and the, over the army or whatever, that's there. Three. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's go off the card. They just say ball pass and stick on that thing. 
Okay. And a ball. Sir, that's not a ball cap. Yeah. Are there yeah, it, 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 I can put ball cap. I, I got mm -hmm. on. I can show you some pictures where I got ball caps on my on my truck too. You ain't gonna call that a ball cap though. They ain't a, you know what I'm saying? They, what is that's it? That's a Toyota. On? Huh? What is it on? No, that's just a piece of I don't even know what that thing is. It's a placard that you just put up there? Is that what you're saying? It ain't a placard, it's a sticker. It's a sticker? You know, yeah, exactly. Okay. It's a sticker. All right, so the next thing, everybody get on them pictures. They spill that. The next thing, these two trailers right here, everybody, everybody tracking? The trailer and the trailer. Two trailers. They're there. They're on the road. Chris, you can't have them. Move it out of the way. Okay, I move when I get home, y'all. So you're moving those? Yes, y'all want okay. to go. I move them. These, this, this big truck right here, with the thing. You moving that too? Yes, I move that. Okay. I don't have a problem. What I do is, I will. Yeah, I move that. But then the uh, Toyota. Please can let you... me have a Toyota. It ain't a business truck. That's just my personal truck. It ain't. I mean, what can you do with a little Toyota? It's four cylinder. You know what I'm saying? It's my personal truck. All right, let's go to the next one. Well, we already talked about that. We took the pitch again. Oh yeah, hold up. He did, you did get the, he did get tagged though. So let me let me ask you a question. Um, with the uh, the trailer, is that appropriate to be there? Um, is is that ask Gary a question? Go ahead. Is that appropriate to be there? The, the trailer? No sir. It's not. It's no, advertising. Commercial. Okay. Well, it, it hasn't. It's not so much the advertising. It's associated with a Absolutely. business in a residential area, which Mr. Pace does not have a permit. Four. Well, if I get a, pick, a permit, can I put it there? The trailer? An approved permit. Approved permit, yeah. If I no, put sir, it... because that's part of the performance criteria that it can't. Uh, so basically. Being, uh, to run a business from your home, there can be no outward appearance that the business is being conducted to maintain the residential integrity and appearance of the neighborhood. Okay. Question, question, because um, I'm still up. Yes, sir. I'm good to go. So if I take all the stickers and all my phone, all my phone, I would just go take this shop and have them just turn it back green. Could I keep it there? <coughs> no, because then it's still considered storage of commercial <coughs> equipment in a residential zone. I'm, I'm lost because you say, how many see, axles I showed you a it? picture of a trailer. How many, axles, people, huh? how many axles is it's on your trailer? It's got two axles on it. So, Remember what he just identified earlier? One axle. Ain't it? One axle. So I need to move that then. Right. Okay. Good. All good your go. trailers have two axles, except for the one in the yeah, back. Yeah, you're right. I, I, except I, for the back. I the like the heavy that's in the backyard. Exactly. Backyard is good. That's my. That's what I used to ride cross rocks. I ride harness now. Mr. Pate, be... um, what's your official business address? My official business address. Yeah. Twelve thirty nine Rock and Roll Road. Okay. Want a business call? You have one? Yeah, I do. Okay. Back to what we was talking about for. Okay. As you can see, this truck right here, I will move if y'all tell me to. This truck do not have pace yourself or none of that on. This is a regular truck that I pay insurance, got tax on it. This would, is that is that against the law too? I mean against the code. I'm asking you, sir. What's that, sir? This code, okay. this truck right here. If I take the trailer off. Because it got more than one axle on it, and leave the truck there. If it's and a put commercial it in my vehicle yard. associated with a business, yes, it's. Well, it ain't got. It don't. It don't have. How you know it's a personal? It don't say. I don't. What I'm saying, sir. Hold up. I'm not trying to be small. But listen to this. When you get a business, because I got 18 wheels under my business name, this truck is not under my business. It's on my personal insurance. You understand what I'm saying? Let's go technical with. It. So can I have it? It ain't got no pace yourself. It don't have nothing. It's just a truck. I hope y'all see what I'm trying to get. Yeah. It is, we can't take this stuff personally. It's all business. Mr. You know Pace, what, what you got to understand, too, yes. is that uh, Mr. Hewlett, he, he's, he's telling you if it's a vehicle that, that, you, that, you, that has commercial use, then you shouldn't have it there. Yeah, I understand that. So but what I'm saying I got is, you. So he answered your question. I'm asking him. Okay. He asked me. But it's, this is, yes, I can use it for commercial. But I got stuff over there in my office to pull this with, too. But if y'all want me to move it over there, by all means, I put it over there. That's what I'm saying. Um, well, why, now, why don't you? And we all we can all leave. Put what? 
put all your equipment, put all of your equipment over on Rocky or at, at twelve thirty nine Rocky Rod, and and I, got I, I can go. Okay. I, can I, go I, know, and have, I know what you're saying. Home and have dinner. Yeah, I want to eat down the I mean, why you know, being, stomach um, big, but look, what I'm saying, sir, I have a problem with, you know, I have a problem with moving my personal. The only thing I have a problem with moving my ball because they're my personal. They don't work. They ain't with my business. They're my, my personal toys. I got a problem with that. That's why we're in here. But the, all the stuff on the road, like I told you, on the road, <coughs> it can go. So everything that you have out there that that um, that um, code enforcement had an issue with, you're going to move that. The only issue that you have is the Bobcats because they have sentimental yeah, exactly. Value. That's what I'm saying to you. Okay. That's what I'm saying to the board. I got you. You see what I'm saying? So that's, yeah. so that's all you had to submit then, basically. That's like Tacky Chris, you know, Cypress Museum. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean so, 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 I just everybody, y'all, please don't don't look at me wrong, but everybody have everybody got simple, you know what I'm saying? Some people got votes, and I don't have a problem with that, sir. And yes, that's sir. certainly you're right. Yes, sir. My question was going to be, yes, if you could have moved all this stuff, why didn't you? Because it's due process. He said it. Ain't that what you said, sir? Yes. That's okay. Due process. You see what I'm saying? Yes, because so, my thing is, uh, the road stuff, not to be, a, you, you know what I'm saying? I ain't parking in front of nobody. I thought, you know, I'm not parking in front of nobody else's house. I'm parking in front of my house. I could see if my stuff was bleeding over on the other side of the road or in front of somebody's house. Yes. That's a, you know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a bad person. Bad citizen there. But you see in front of my house. Question. But you're saying your main reason for coming here is because of your concern of not being able to have your, um, your two bobcats there that are, like, uh, personal. Yes, sir. Okay. That's it. So that's that's all you have to submit then, basically. So you good? That's all you I'm have to good. submit. Good. Yes, sir. That's that's what I'm good with. Okay. Uh, but we we got we got it. We got to finish the story, sir. Go ahead. All right. Because now you took you take good pictures. This a picture. This truck right here. We're not what? arguing about the. Oh truck no 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 huh? no no no. I'm just saying this right here ain't going in the mud. There. Do I take it back to the dealership? I, I, that's, that's another thing. You don't want to, <coughs> you got sentimental value on stuff, you don't want to go put it in the mud. You know, or leave it out in the rain in the weather. I don't have no overhead. Overhead, like, you know what I'm saying, put them things on them. Because these my, them, them my little toys. Uh, that's just for me and my wife getting this in. And we go on a trip sometime, the Woosaw. This truck right here in the 2016, that truck there. Then the picture up under there, I need to move that to my land. I already know you ain't got to tell me, because you ready to tell me to move that. Okay. Back to what we here for. What told us? All right. Are you through, sir? Yes, sir. I'm through. Okay. I'm sorry. Any questions okay. for Mr. Pace? I have a question. The uh, this truck you got here. Yes, sir. What kind of tag is that? Oh, uh, that's a weighted tag. It is not a commercial tag. It's personal. Now, anything I got out here right now, for his vehicles to drive the vehicle, not for okay. With them, all of them at my house, that I check in my house, they are personal and commercial tags. I mean, say not commercial, but weighted. Weighted tag, yes. But everything on my land, that's why I can't brand new, I can't do that. It's over there at my office. I, okay, I got eight, I got three 18 wheelers over there. Uh, Bulldog Jack. Bulldog with some big tracks. Now, if I brought that in that, in that yard right there, won't that be bad? Now, that's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? A 60,000 pound bulldozer in my yard. Commercial equipment. I should be in this meeting right now. That's commercial equipment. You see what I'm saying? If you got enough space to put three 18 wheelers in a bulldozer, why can't you put this over there, too? I can put it over there. There's stuff on the road. I don't want, I, what I'm saying is a mud hole over there. So, you, but your only concern is the two bobcats that you have selling yeah, in the value for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, for like the trellis, I don't have, I can put that over there. It's a mud hole. I, I don't really not, you know what I'm saying? Plus, it make it easy for me to jump in and then go to work instead of going over to my office and, you know what I'm saying, and roll out okay. when I got it right there. You see what I'm saying? Yes, and that's all you had to submit. Yes, good. Yes. Okay. Yeah, let me ask one more time. Any more questions for Mr. Pace? 
Any more questions for Mr. Ulet? I have this. Uh, these pictures are taken from 10 years ago. No, sir. That's a 2016 aerial photo. So it was taken sometime last year. I said 2006. And oh. all this equipment has been around there, parked in its vicinity and on the roads, and the bobcats have been in your yard since, you said, 2006? Oh, since 2000, I said about six years ago, six or oh, seven years Excuse me. Uh-huh. About 11 years. So I and but the, I, don't, I don't have all that stuff no more. And the new code mm -hmm. became effective when? July of 2014 was when council passed the Unified Development Ordinance, mm -hmm. as it reads today. And did the previous codes address the same situation? Yes, sir. <coughs> okay. That's all I got. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Ula? Are there any other witnesses or testimony? Okay, then I hereby close the hearing. And this report. I'll open it up to board discussion. I would remind the board of two things. Number one, you have three options. They're on the bottom of part of your package that came out. You can either affirm the action of the code enforcement official. You can modify that action or you can reverse it. If you find a affirm it, you also need to decide by what date. In the original letter of notice of violation, he was given 30 days. That ended on December 12th. So you need to decide two things, really. One is which of the three actions do you want? That's the first decision. Then we get to any further dis decisions. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at option B. And what I would modify is, uh, is that he'd be allowed to keep the bobcats under the car, carport since they're not for commercial use. It's just like uh, sentimental value, something he looks at and he already identified it not operational. But everything else, I believe, needs to be moved within seven days. We asked him um, how long will it take him to move everything. He said two to a couple of days. I look at it as a couple as two. Um, within seven days. Matt? Are we voting on a time frame or a no, suggestion? No, we're voting on which one you want to take, A, B, or C. Okay. We're not voting on anything yet. Yes, we're correct. Discussing we're here to discuss which option, A, B, or C. But anybody driving through that neighborhood that looks at a bobcat does not look at a bobcat and say, that's, you know, this is not a 59 Chevy or a 57 Chevy. People driving through a neighborhood look at that. That's a piece of construction equipment. Why does this person have two pieces of construction equipment in his front yard? Mm -hmm. Even though that, the individual may say that I, I have these this equipment, these two bobcats, they have sentimental value. If I drive through the neighborhood and I look at it, <coughs> why does this guy have bobcats in his front yard? They ain't in my front yard, sir. They're on the side of the park. They're in your yard, sir. Yes, sir. On the side of my yard. You know, the, the, the reason why I stayed why I stayed is because he identified it not over 6,000 pounds. And, I mean, whether it be a lawn tractor or um, a, a bobcat, I mean, um, that, because it is exceptionally small to be up on this carport to begin with. And he said it's not operational. So... <coughs> and I don't, I don't see uh, where a, a tractor would be more aesthetically um, pleasing than a, a small bobcat would. You know, some pretty good sized John Deere's and, and uh, zero turns that people drive with. And they do the same thing, well, operate rather, rather than drive. But everything else, I, I believe everything else needs to um, go to the other location and that he needs to um, a 
apply for um, a home occupation permit if he uh, seeks to do any other stuff like have the trailer sitting there and stuff like that. Nobody, don't get this, one of those two. Yeah, I don't think there's any contention that the the uh, the truck and the, and the and the cherry picker gotta go. That's then the trailer. I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's the problem. I think we're all pretty much in agreement that those are commercial vehicles and they need to disappear. vehicles that are on the street don't belong there um, I personally believe that those Bobcats are while they're not operational right now if you go over there and put a key in them and you crank them up they'll probably probably start which they you know they are just I'm just thinking why would anyone want to keep Bobcats and just in their yard but um, <laughs> I don't see why Mr. Pace would have to apply for a for a business permit if he moves everything out of his yard or or whatever is parked on the street. Because you told me that your business address, you mm -hmm. know, like your your mail goes yes, to twelve thirty nine Rocky yes, Run Run Road. Yes, so take all that stuff to you know with from your business because it do, you don't run a home business. No, I don't. Yeah. Just I started all the, off a of home business, but, but they're just, yeah, I don't take know. Take all your no commercial more. equipment and put it in, in your commercial lot and get it out of the residential neighborhood. And then we wouldn't have to be here. You wouldn't have to spend $250. I paid 300 Okay. Well, one and, thing that he identified, though, uh, that, 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 I, that I thought about is that he said he parks there for convenience. So whether you're a first responder and you have an ambulance or a, um, a state patrolman or... Um, Somebody that works for um, uh, um, North Carolina Highway, no, there, so, so so, or even charter cable or something like that. People drive those commercial vehicles home for convenience, so they don't have to drive all the way to the, um, the place of business in order to um, uh, pick up the vehicle. So if they got a job, if they work for charter, and they got a job in Moorhead City, they may take the um, and they live in Swansboro, they may take the um, the, the the charter van home. So they can do their work in Newport. I mean, I mean, it it, it happens. So I he's mean, only ten minutes away from from his place of business. And I mean, I, I don't think anybody drives do. a Bobcat. Though. I think, I the, think the, the Bobcats, the you know, the Bobcats they really don't, don't bother me. You know, they're, yeah, they're underneath they the carport. But, but, but what I'm saying, he, he made a good point there. I mean, I got neighbors that work for Time Warner Cable. All them trucks be in their yard. You know what I'm saying? I know this is about me. It ain't about them or whatever. Reason why that stuff with that was is convenience for me, but I don't have a problem moving if the board say I got to move it. I don't have a problem. A couple of times you said it's a mud hole over at twelve thirty nine yes, Rocky yes, Run Road. Yes, it is. That's why you're not parking your vehicles over there. It's because you but don't want to get stuck too, in the mud. But convenience too, sir. It's convenience mud. for me. Just get your vehicles off the, the the residential road, and everything's cool. I mean, I how simple is that. that? Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I have a I have a commercial business, mm -hmm. and it's in the business you know, and it's in the business area, and I mm -hmm. do my business there. Yes, sir. But your your neighbors don't want to see your business in front of their house, you know. And from the aerial pictures from years ago, the the erosion Not years the, ago, it's last year. Well, okay, last year the erosion, you know, the the the, the tire tracks, you know. Here you're a landscaper and. <coughs> You probably have. I, I wouldn't. I would. I wouldn't want to profess my my business is landscaping and have a yard like that. That's just me. Did you not hear me? I said I do bulldozers, and that's just what I started. I, you know, some people go from. You know, you start off small, and you grow a little bit bigger. I'm kind of. If nobody don't knock me down, I'm trying to get a little bit bigger. So that's why I'm, I'm into. Clear land. Now. Yeah. I don't do much of the pushing on the lawnmower. If I don't have a drum, just tractor. If I hit one, I 
You know what I'm saying? I started off with that. That's what would be up under there. If I had a green tractor like everybody else got <coughs> in their yard. You know what I'm saying? But I don't have a tractor. I like Bobcat. That's why. <coughs> you see what I'm saying? We do. I, I, I mean, you know. In face, I was referring to your truck, not all the other stuff. I was referring to your truck, the pickup truck, not the other stuff. <coughs> but I, I, I don't, I don't have any issue with the, uh, um, the two Bobcats yes, sitting up under the car I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I look at it like this: if, if, if somebody can park a, a, a John Deere tractor. You know, in their um, uh, had one in their yard they cut grass with, or a skag, or any type of zero turn nowadays. Some of them are, um, are bigger than some of these these small bobcats I've seen. So I, I don't have any issue with it, but I do have an issue with all the stuff you park alongside the road. I agree with you. I mean, because because it's, it's, it's there, there is no ambiguity in respects to what. The UDO states and what yes, you sir. can have and what you can't. I have. understand that. You're right. So I, I just believe there's some leeway with the, um, the two pieces of equipment that you have in your carport, up under your carport. Yeah. <coughs> I'm done. Mr. Lett, question. If all, except for the personal, uh, personal vehicles, the trucks, the pickups, whatever you want to call them, I don't care. Except for, everything else was removed except for the personal vehicles the pickups and the bobcats under the carport, would he be within code? I, I would have to say that the bobcats are a commercial vehicle and it's storage of commercial vehicles. Okay. And that's, that's staff's interpretation, you know. Okay. If... Uh, if someone overrides our interpretation, so be it. But uh, commercial vehicles, even with the definition of the number of axles or the weight, the intent of the ordinance to maintain residential integrity, uh, to be customarily associated in a residential area, uh, and Mr. Burgess talked, you know, John Deere, Skaggs, lawn tractors, whatever size they may be, they were made for, the manufacturer makes those for residential use, for cutting grass, uh, things of that nature. A bobcat is not customarily associated with a residential use. So that would be staff's interpretation with regard to the bobcats. Okay, thank you. I'm going to ask Mr. Fisher to explain exactly the first action the board needs to take. The, the board needs to look over uh, the facts, the evidence, and their, their own personal opinion. And basically, you make one of two decisions. Um, you either, well, you can make three, but you... you by making two of those, you're actually making the third. You can decide to reverse the decision uh, of the board, of the, uh, of, of the planning department, of staff, but it takes a fourth-fifth vote to do that. Four of you out of five have to decide to do that. You can modify that decision, but again, it takes four out of five of you to decide to do that. You can affirm the decision uh, but if you don't do anything, you're basically affirming the decision. So if you can't come to a consensus and four-fifths of you can't either modify or reverse, then you basically confirm. So what I say is if you don't make one of the two, then you've made the third kind of automatically. Okay, that's what I thought you meant. I just want to make sure. Does anybody have any further discussion? Okay, and due to the fact that it has to be four-fifths, I'm going to start, and based on what Mr. Fisher said, I'm going to take them in order and ask for a vote by the board. The first one being B, does the board desire to modify the action of the enforcement official? All in favor signify by raising their right hand, please. Okay. 
Does the board favor reversing the action of the code enforcement official? All in favor, signify by raising the right hand. Should I go ahead and take the formal vote on A? You, you can, okay. just keep, but you need a motion well, and a second for, to affirm. Okay, I need a motion to affirm. Motion to affirm. Second. Seconded. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor signify by raising the right hand. All opposed? We have four affirming, one opposed. All right, the next thing the board needs to decide is in the letter, in the notice of violation dated November 9th, 2016, Mr. Pace was given until December 12th, I think it was, anyway, to comply. The board needs to decide how far, how long from today he has to comply. Mr. Pace, how long do you think it would take you to comply? No matter what I think, he asked you that. Oh, y'all okay. vote against me anyway. He asked you that. Except him. I know it was going to be like that anyway. That's why I said we should have just, well, he could have went home and ate down there and stuff because all oh, y'all know what I'm saying. And him, we should have just went on to the next next level. Because you already know what y'all going to do. You know what I'm saying? Well. So, well, we waste our time here, sir. Motion to give we did. one week. But I got time. I work for myself. He's going to have 30 days to appeal. I have 30 days. So, um, it gives him 30 days to appeal anyway. Well, I'm going to appeal today. So. Mr. Pace, can you let the board finish its action, please? And no, I did not make up my mind before I walked in this room. I know you did. No, you wouldn't do that. You don't like me, do you, sir? I'll entertain a motion. Well, never mind. I'll entertain a motion to approve the fact that he has 30 days from today. This ain't the fifth motion. Uh, second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Any other further business to come before the board? Just one quick matter. Yes, sir. Would you introduce yourself, although most of us know you, sir? Yes, good evening. Richard Woodruff, City Manager of Jacksonville. Just wanted to take a moment on behalf of the full mayor and council. Obviously, we have council representatives thanking you all for your service. Code enforcement is one of the most important actions that city government has to ensure that the ordinances that the mayor and council impose upon its citizens are properly uh, and fairly uh, applied. We appreciate the fact that many times that results in you as citizens having to rule for or against your fellow citizen. But I will also tell you that that function is something that every city appreciates, and as city manager, I specifically appreciate. Thank you very much. Can I say something while you're here, sir? I'm sorry, sir. At the same time, do you have questions that you may have of me as city manager from the standpoint of you as an advisor to the mayor and council and the general city government? I don't. Okay, thank Can you I very say much something, sir? Can I say something? No, sir, this is not your meeting. This ain't my meeting. Okay. okay. I'd be happy to talk to you after okay. the meeting. Okay. So. Bye. All right. Can I, can I say something, Mr. Council? Can I say something? I understand a motion to adjourn. Can I say something? No, sir. Can I understand a motion I'll to adjourn? I'll say what you get to do. Second. Okay. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Meeting's adjourned.